about the war in Israel right now. The war in Israel, I have, no opinion. I have no opinion concerning the war in Israel. I'm concerned with the war that we face spiritually yes, as yes, a people. Yes, the oppression yes. that we face here on a day-to-day -day basis, trying to get our sisters and our brothers on the same page. That's the war I'm concerned about. Yes, I'm concerned yes. about my brothers from Honduras thinking they Honduras when they actually Zebulon. Yes, that's what I'm concerned with. I'm concerned with all these people that's being dropped off here in the city from over the border in Mexico and the problems and the plight and the issues that they face and how to bring them out of captivity. That's what I'm faced with. That's what I'm worried about. You understand that? And the only way we can get over those issues and problems if, if we come together learning who God is and how to actually serve him. It's a simple mindset to but take a man for his word. It'll be simple for y'all to just take me for my word. Without going and looking in his Bible. Right? And think about this. Has your pastor ever provided a, if you ever been to church, has he ever provided a platform for you to come to him and get answers? Yeah, see, I'm going, actually, when I leave here, I got class at 7. Good. I'm Coptic. So, Coptic is the first uh, religion out of Egypt and Ethiopia. And I got to study up on that. I ain't heard that one. Yes, and we, we wear garments. So our garments Where your garment at right now? It's in the car. We wear our crowns and our robes, you know, and we think we call ourselves kings, queens, you know, uh, and that type of thing. So right now we're, I'm studying to be more and more into the religion. Give me Jeremiah but, 2 and 21. Oh, uh, no. Nah, I'm listening. I ain't got it. I ain't got it right now. I'm going to work in progress. I'm going to work in progress. That's okay. That's okay. How come? How come? How come? You're a queen, right? Yep. You're a queen. And what's the God you believe in? Who is the God you believe in? Black Jesus. Black Jesus is the God you believe in. Where did you learn that information from? My, my church. Your church taught and you I, that? Yes, and then we go So did day. your church did your church teach you about the conditions our people living in as being the lowest? No. Okay, so listen. This is what you should do. Listen at this. Read. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2 and verse 21. Bring it out. Yes. I had planted thee a noble vine. Read. Holy, a right seed. How then are thou turned into a degenerate plant, a strange vine unto me? Read 20. Verse 20. For of old time, I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands. The Lord, for, uh, for as long as we've been recording history, has been getting us in and out of captivities. We have been getting ourselves into captivities by disobeying the Lord, and the Lord has taken us out of captivities. He's done this over and over again, right? Read. And thou saidest, I will not transgress. And we say, Lord, you got us out of this mess. We ain't going to sin no more. But for some reason, we keep forgetting. We keep forgetting. Do you know what sin is? What's the definition of sin? The flesh. The flesh, something that's not of God. What you say sin is, sis? Let's get the definition. It's of the flesh. It's of the flesh. Who said that? What is it? All right, we finna read it out the Bible. Let's see if he's correct. Let's see if they're correct. Let's see what the scriptures say. Because if we're learning how to serve God, and if we're learning not to transgress again, if we're saying that and making that vow, we got to know what it is so we can be on page. So we don't go back into any more captivities, right? Read. That's the book of 1 John. Chapter 3 and verse 4. Bring it out. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. Read it again. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. You heard what that said? He said, whoever commits sin transgress the law. So to transgress means to go against the law. So if you go against the law, the law that says a woman shouldn't wear pants, right? That's going against the law. That's called sin. So right now, you sisters are in the midst of sin. Maybe you didn't know that before, and that's right okay. Because you're learning now. You're still alive. You still got a chance. You understand that? It could be cold with a dress. And what, you, what do you wear underneath a dress to stay warm? Leggings. What's that called? That's called underwear. Right. Undergarments. That's underwear. Stretch, stretch pants? That's underwear. Bring it out. You ain't going to be cold. You could be as warm as you are in them pants right now wearing a dress. What, what you're doing right now is making excuse. Oh, no, I got a, That's what? making excuses. It's no, not fast, sis. What's what you what you saying about the war in Israel right now? The war in Israel, I have, no I have no opinion concerning the war in Israel. 
I'm concerned with the war that we face spiritually yes, as a people. Right. The yes, oppression right. that we face here on a day-to-day -day basis, trying to get our sisters and our brothers on the same page. That's the one I'm concerned about. Yes, I'm concerned yes. about my brothers from Honduras thinking they Honduras when they actually Zebulon. Yes, that's right. what I'm concerned with. I'm concerned with all these people that's being dropped off here in the city from over the border in Mexico and the problems and the plight and the issues that they face and how to bring them out of captivity. Bring that's what I'm faced with. That's what I'm worried about. You understand that? And the only way we can get over those issues and problems is if we come together learning who God is and how to actually serve him. We can't be concerned with politics that don't concern us. That's politics that don't concern us. Why did it start? Why did it happen? Why? That's not my concern. But my concern is making sure my brothers and sisters is on point. Because at the end of the day, God can put an end to all this that quick. You see how we just ran here where it said, Lord, we won't transgress again, but we keep transgressing. Let's worry about offending God. Let's worry about how to not offend him. Let's not worry about what they got going on over there. Read that again. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Go back to Jeremiah 2. This is the main concern, my brother. How you doing, my brother, with the bull's hat? What's your name? My brother's name, William. William, you've been born up on the west side your whole life? Nah. Where you from? I'm from Cabrini. From Cabrini? Yeah. Things have changed since they done knocked your building down, ain't it? No doubt. And it's still kind of the same, though, right? Yeah. The, the, the negative stuff that we face in our community as a people, right? The ways that we cope with it, all that's still the same. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's, it's different, but it's still the same in a sense. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to change the issues, the problems. Some people have to turn to drugs. Some people have to turn to liquor to coke. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to show you what the Lord says so that you can hope in something different. Don't put your hopes in substances. Don't put your hope in man or a woman that make you feel good. The Lord going to make you feel good. And when you feel good, can't nothing else bring that joy to you. Right. When we start leaning on other stuff, all this other stuff we lean on tears down every time. Right. But the Lord ain't here to tear us down. He's here to tear down the nigga that we are in a mind and build us up as the kings that we truly are. Yes, right. Let's listen to what the Lord just said about our people. Read. Yeah. That's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2 and verse 20. Yeah. For of all time, I have broken thy yoke and burst thy man. And thou saidest, I will not transgress. When upon every high hill and under every green tree, thou wanderest playing the harlot. We wanted in every place, in every religion, in every school of thought, horoscopes, economics, nationality, or, or nationalism. We, we, uh, we understood and we learned Christianity. We learned Islam. We learned all these different religions and faiths and beliefs, witchcraft. We dwelt in all these different things coming out of slavery. We cried to get out. The Lord said, you've cried to get out of this captivity. But yet and still, you're still transgressing. You're going around under all these different doctrines and beliefs, and you're refusing to follow me. Read. Yet I have planted thee a noble vine. The Lord planted us, planted us a noble vine. We are special people. We're supposed to be upright. But a lot of times you see us walking around here trying to scheme, plotting on the next brother that looked just like him that ain't got as much as he got. We plotting on our people. That's, that's not noble behavior. Noble behavior is honoring your brother. You see your brother struggling, you're doing what you can to help pull him up. You see your brother down and out, guess what you're doing? You're talking to him. You're seeing where his head is. What is causing him to be down and out? And you're giving him solutions. That's what we're doing right now. We're giving solutions. Violence ain't the answer. It never has been. I'm going to answer your question. One moment. Let me continue this thought. A lot of times, brothers think violence is the answer. You got a problem with your brother. Instead of solving it, you want to fight it out. Why don't you fight it out with words and talk and live another day? A lot of our brothers not hearing that because they're not noble. These are noble men you're standing before. That's right. And you're a noble man. Because a lot of noble men not standing up here listening, but y'all too, y'all special. Y'all different. Y'all not like the other men that's around here. Right? Y'all heard this word and y'all wanted to come and see what the word of the Lord was. This is what the word of the Lord is. Be noble. That means you're a king. Kings are noble. Wake them up. You are a king. You're not an African-American. You're not a nigger. Read. 
Yes. Her impurity a normal void. God said I made you special. We. Holy. A right. Holy. A right seed. Uh-huh. How then are thou turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? He said I made you the best. I made you to go upright. How in the hell is you now bent and bowed down and you crooked and you kowtowing to these people? Worrying about what's going on in another land when we got so many problems here within our people. I say within another land because he asked me a question about the war over there in Palestine. I ain't got no opinion of that. What's your opinion of that? Do you have an opinion of that? It don't matter to you, right? What matters to you is how we going to get along. How we going to come out of this situation. Because once we do, 2nd Ezra 6 and 55. Once we do, once we come out of being degenerate, the Lord got a prize for us. He said, the earth is yours. The earth is yours. Did you hear that? That's a heavy thing. He said, the people that I created, noble, I created the earth for them. But since they degenerate, since they don't want to listen to my commandments, since they don't want to listen to my laws, guess what? I'm going to take it from them for a period of time. I'm going to make them suffer for a period of time. I'm going to make them lose their identity, lose their mind for a period of time. Now is that time when we get all this back. This is the beginning stages of you waking up. You got to take this information that you learned, study it. Understand what it is we really saying and bring it to the people that's around you. I can't reach the people that's around you because I'm wherever I'm at on a day-to-day basis. But you're around some people that you need to reach. The Lord got you here for a moment because you got a part to play in getting this back. Read. It's the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 55. Read all this. Have I spoken before thee, O Lord? Be- because thou madest the world for our sakes. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. So the world was made for our sakes. This is Ezra. He's speaking about the Israelites. The world was made for our sakes. Read. And for the other people. Now, that's a separation going on. You might have thought the world was for everybody. Like we all want. But the Lord said, as we're saying, the world was made for our sakes. Now, you want to talk about the other people? Well, for the other people, what about them? Which also come of Adam. Because everybody come from Adam. But this special group that you're looking at right now, you, you, we come from Adam as well. Read. Thou hast said that they are nothing. The other ones that come from Adam, that's not the Israelites. The Lord said they are what? They are nothing. That's right. That ain't me. I ain't write this. I was born, and this was written way before I was born. So I ain't making this up. You can get you a Bible and read this yourself. It's the 1611 King James Bible. He got two books because this version of this Bible ain't got it in it. But it's in the KJV Bible. You ever read your Bible? No, not really. You got to get into it, man. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 